After looking at my large backlog of games and saying, wow, I have nothing to play, and then starting a fifth playthrough of Elden Ring, I realized maybe I'm missing out on some great experiences by just sticking with what I got. Some of my favorite games of all time came from when I made a random purchase just because the game sort of looked interesting and seeing what that experience would lead to. So I decided to sit down and force myself to try some of these games that I've always heard about or have always been on my radar that I never got around to playing. This journey went across a whole bunch of games, from old renowned JRPGs to some of the most popular shooters that I never got around to playing. Also, most of the people that watch this channel are not subscribed, so please consider subscribing. It's free and helps out this channel so much, but without further ado, please join me as I descend into the hits and misses of the multitude of games I tried this month. Coming from the same studio that brought the Persona series to life, which is my favorite series of all time, I had some high hopes for this game. I think the first thing I noticed was the art for this game. The art style is absolutely beautiful with its hand-drawn art style. So many frames of this game just feel like a picture brought to life, and it is breathtaking what they were able to do. As you play through these different characters, you experience different time periods and have to figure out how it all connects. Characters that show up in different times, even though they shouldn't be there, keeps you guessing as to what the big picture is. You'll see characters you played as just walking around and living in the background, which makes the whole world feel so alive. The music, while I don't remember any tracks in particular, was a certified bop. I remember really enjoying a lot of the tracks in combat, as well as just walking around the school. Overall, this game is a solid 9 out of 10 for me so far, and I'm excited to play more. I haven't been big into Star Wars for a long while, but I remember enjoying games like The Force Unleashed, so a Souls-like Star Wars game where you play as a Jedi sounded super interesting to me. First things first, the visuals and aesthetic are absolutely wonderful. The way people talk and communicate makes the whole world feel alive. I love the way that the story is structured, reminding us just how hopeless this situation is for our Jedi character. While the controls are a bit sluggish compared to the Souls game, I don't think it's bad overall, it's just taking some time to get used to. I only played the first planet, and so far the level design hasn't stood out too much, but I'm excited to see what some other planets have to offer. I actually went to the wrong planet the first time I played this game, going to Dathomir, where I got my booty absolutely kicked around by a bunch of random enemies and was so mad at the game that I kind of dropped it for a short while. So far, the gameplay hasn't been incredibly complex either, since I've only done the first few planets. You have limited force abilities and limited lightsaber moves, but I watched my brother play and it gets really exciting later on, so I am excited to jump back into it. The music, I mean, it's Star Wars. You can't go wrong with Star Wars music. Every scene has just got the most climactic music to follow along with it, and it is just wonderful. Plugging it in, I would give this a solid 7 out of 10. It didn't blow me away, but I am curious to see what else this game has to offer. I honestly have no idea why this game is on here. The design looked really interesting, and the gameplay looked simple and fun, and it was a cheap price, so I figured it couldn't hurt to pick it up. And I have to say, what a fascinating puzzle game. Watching the problems get more complex in real time while you're trying to solve them feels like just the right amount of stress when the visuals and music are so inviting. Trying to organize and connect all your metros is just so addictingly enjoyable. I'm ashamed to say this, but this is the game I played most during the month. I kept finding myself coming back for it and doing another city trying to figure out how I could connect the trails. It is absolutely engaging throughout. The sound design and whole aesthetic is calming and yet nerve wracking at the same time, which leads to some surprisingly tense moments as you trust in the system and hope that the train arrives at the station before you get kicked out. There are so many surprising factors in the gameplay, like unlocking a new line or unlocking a new tunnel that keeps the gameplay feeling engaging and interesting and far from redundant. If I were to give this game a rating, I would also give this a solid nine. This game was just endlessly enjoyable and I loved every second I played it, and will continue to play it well into the future. If I'm being 100% honest, I don't think this game is made for me. There's just so much waiting around as you try to level up your prisoner, whether it's trying to get stronger or faster or smarter so you can craft more things. I find the crafting to also be really irritating as finding all the ingredients you need to craft something can be extremely tedious, and even knowing what to craft can be a hassle all on its own. It's fun to figure stuff out on your own, but there's just so much trial and error that set you back quite far that it really starts to get frustrating. However, the game does have a lot of depth. Because of the way the game is structured, you actually have to think deeply about your plans to escape and what you're going to do on certain days, which can be really interesting when you finally pull off that heist perfectly. So plugging it in. I would give it a 6 out of 10. I think the game could be really interesting, but it never really stood out to me, but it is far from a bad game. 
I have no idea what this game is about, and I love it. The skateboarding feels amazing, as the game is always encouraging you to experiment and get a higher score. This game is just one big challenge against yourself, trying to get better than your last attempt, or hit that move you've been struggling with. It almost reminds me of Dark Souls in a way, with the gameplay being limited by your own skill. Spending time learning the different moves and how to combine them for bigger combos, and then letting the instincts take control is just so incredibly fun. I would give this game a solid 8 out of 10. I didn't play too many levels, but it is such a stress reliever. It is just so fun to hop in and pull off some crazy moves. Another game I trusted, Fate to Make Good. I love depressing games, and I love games that deal with depressing things. And so, with Gris having an overwhelmingly positive review on Steam, I figured it had to be doing something right. The animation in this game is absolutely gorgeous, with its 2D art style that's hand-drawn, gorgeous, smooth, colorful, and so stylistic. The visuals all over the world are creative and mysterious, and I just love it! The music is so great too, and captures the perfect mood of tranquility and sadness. The use of color is just amazing, with the backgrounds telling a story all on its own. The way you interact with the world makes it feel believable, despite how absurd it is. The camera also plays a special element in the story, knowing when to pull in or pull away from a certain scene makes it feel incredibly cinematic. I don't think there's a single thing this game does wrong, and I am excited to play more. I would give this game another solid 9 out of 10. Truly an awesome experience, I cannot wait to hop back in and finish it. This game is really dark, and by that I mean the visuals. The dark visuals contrast amazingly with the light elements, putting fear in your heart as you might have to run away now that your hiding spot is no longer safe. I love their linear approach as they take a hands-off approach to letting you figure out what to do in the game. The game can also be very tense, with a lot of moments having a ton of downtime and just having you walk around in silence, absorbing the world through the background. Even choosing to have elements in the foreground block you from seeing your character can induce a little bit of fear in you. Almost all the animations and visual quality is great. Your character moves realistically and interacts with the environment in creative ways. The sound design really stands out since a lot of scenes don't really have music, so it's up to the sound to set the mood. I love also being able to adapt on the fly as chase scenes pop out of nowhere and you have to figure out how to solve the problem before you end up getting caught. So far it's just a fine game, the puzzles are interesting and the atmosphere is good, but the horror is just kinda lacking, I never really got scared that much even though I get scared really easily. Not that I might of course. I feel like the atmosphere is incredible, but the payoffs always feel kinda lacking. So if I were to plug this in, I'd give this another 6 out of 10. I think it does a lot really well, but it hasn't really captured my attention, though I do plan on finishing it. Just being frank, I think this is the best game i played all month. I love the acting, the faces that the characters make, as well as the voices. The cinematography in the cutscenes is phenomenal. Seeing this family go through the loss of a mother is sad, it's powerful, it feels real. The music is awesome, carrying scenes without ever needing to be the center of attention and letting the characters be that. And this is just for the first cutscene, I haven't even touched the game! The visuals are just beautiful, it looks awesome. The quality is high on everything. Everything looks great. It goes for a realistic approach instead of a more stylized approach, but it nails it. The animations are amazing. There are so many little touches in the body language that shows how characters are feeling without them even needing to say anything. The combat is pretty fun too, having so many different elements that make it stand out. Plugging this in, this is an easy 10 out of 10. I cannot wait to see more of this game and more of this story. So I played the original game for this a while back, and I remember thinking, that was... Okay, I didn't have any problems with it, but outside of the visual style, nothing really stood out. Except for those stupid running sections, I hate you, I hate you, I hate you. However, I heard that the sequel clears up so many of the problems in the first game, while introducing so many new elements that really stand out. So I was excited to give this sequel a shot. Of course, the visuals and the music are as strong as ever. The way you interact with the environment and how your character moves are also just beautiful. And I mean everything about the visuals is amazing. From its color, to its style, to the way it interacts with the world, to the animations. It is just beautiful. Every small detail in this game feels like it was given the utmost importance. The combat has also been a serious improvement, which is a massive plus because I felt like the original was lacking quite a bit. The movement is also just awesome. Jumping around and moving around the environment feels better than ever. The sound design is just generally amazing, with everything sounding as it should. The exploration is mostly the same, which is good news for most people, but I get lost pretty easily, so sometimes it gets really complicated for me. Giving this game a score, I would give it a 7 out of 10. I'm excited to play more, but I'm not gonna rush into it. 
Okay, before I actually get into the game, this opening cutscene is kind of ridiculously long. I actually was about to fall asleep while watching it for the first time. But the gameplay is actually super awesome. I love and hate games that don't tell you what you're supposed to do and let you figure it out for yourself, but it's because the game doesn't tell you what to do that it leads to some memorable experiences. When I realized my sword was pointing in a direction, when I followed it and found a gigantic beast that was just in front of me, Finding out I could grab onto him and fight him right then and there. The thrill was on. The fight began. It was me versus the beast a hundred times my size. But I could climb him. I maneuvered him. I figured it out and I brought him down and that thrill was like nothing else. The colors are a bit dull, but the gameplay cannot be beaten. The stamina bar feels perfect, making it feel like every movement on the beast is life or death. Figuring out every weak spot while he's trying to shake you off is so fun and the music during the fights are so amazing. Being shaken off actually has me scared because the fall can really easily kill you. Jumps are risky and you're always guessing, ooh, can I actually make that? It makes the whole game feel awesome. If I were to rate this game, I'd give it a 9.5 out of 10. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I think this game is super great. I took down about four Colossi and I'm ready to hop back in and take out the rest. I don't really like shooters, but I've also never really played them either. However, of the few shooter games that I have wanted to play, Apex Legends is at the top of the list. The game feels smooth to play and I love its visual style, but I didn't know there wasn't a single player mode, or at least not to my understanding. So I hopped on on random trios and hoped to figure out how things work. I love the actual world this game takes place in, and the characters you can choose are quite fun. The gunplay is still a bit much for me, and I cannot stand this UI. It is hideous. I mean, I genuinely cannot tell which what guns are good or bad since they all have different colors. Not based on their quality, but based on the type of gun they are, which was totally confusing the first time I played it. If I were to plug this in, I'd give this a mean 5 out of 10. I think this game is amazing if you like shooters, but if you don't, it's going to be quite hard to get into. I usually don't really like roguelike games because of the, the trial and error setbacks, but this game was pretty great. The pixel art is amazing, and the art style and visuals all complement each other so well. The gunplay is fun, and learning how to dodge and explore the map is also just so fun. The bold aesthetic is really nice. The gameplay is amazing. I'll let you find new guns and new items that'll help you. The enemy encounters are really great with different enemies keeping you on your toes all the time. Flipping tables and learning how to dodge keeps every combat encounter feeling extremely engaging. The gameplay is perfectly challenging and I'm excited to play more of it. Plugging it in, I'd give it an easy 8 out of 10. I really enjoyed it. I'm going to play it more, but I have not gotten very far and it is quite hard. This is another game I've heard time and time again high praises for, but never really knew anything about. The visuals are pretty standard, but the puzzles are really fun. Learning the more creative ways to use your portal gun can be really exciting at times, but most of the game is just more and more of these puzzles. I haven't really gotten to the end, so maybe the game will change up at the last second. The robot was kind of funny, and finding these little creepy hideouts where people write notes that warn you about the game can be quite scary, but other than that, I thought the game was just fine. Giving this game a rating, I'd give it like a 6 out of 10. I don't think it does anything bad, but it didn't really stand out to me either. I've actually never played a Final Fantasy game in my life. I used to be terrified of turn-based combat, but thanks to the Persona series, I see just how fun it can be. Okay, I thought I was gonna hate the visuals with this really blocky style, but I actually kinda like it. The characters are definitely the weakest element and really stand out, but despite their limited polygon count, they're still very expressive. The combat is definitely unique, even if I'm not entirely used to it yet. The story is also really engaging, and I've been enjoying the music. The random encounters, I, I kinda hate them, if I'm being honest. I don't like walking around and being thrown into a fight against my will. I also just adore the background art for a lot of these areas, looking extremely realistic while also having that pixel art style. It feels alien while also real at the same time. It's a really interesting feeling. The story and characters are obviously the most standout part to me. I really enjoyed the characters, I enjoyed their struggle, and I loved seeing how it was reflected in the gameplay and reflected in the plot as they go on new missions. I'm definitely excited to play more. Plugging this in, I'm giving this an easy 9 out of 10. I know I didn't talk about it too much, but I really, really enjoyed it. I think it does so much really well, and I'm excited to see where it goes from here. The world for this game is extremely interesting with monsters and guilds and all sorts of islands to explore. I love the vibes, the visuals are pretty, the colors are nice. The movement is really fun and that's mainly down to this grappling hook. I know you don't get to use it too much, but this, this was just sick. I mean, come on. The combat I'm still not entirely used to, trying to figure out what weapons are best for what monster, but I'm getting used to it. 
The game so far seems pretty standard. I haven't really hung out with too many of the characters or fought too many of the areas. I actually did this game kind of dirty because I haven't really played it too much. But I did enjoy it. Despite what I have to say, I'd give this game about a 7 out of 10. I think the game is fine and I'm excited to see more of it, but I didn't really give it a fair chance. So I feel kind of weird giving it any lower of a score than this. The real reason I picked this game, those memes were pretty funny. The visuals for this game are so awesome. I love its style, I love how realistic it is, and I love how creative they get with some of the level designs. The voice acting is amazing, with every character's voice having its own tinge of personality that makes their conversations just spark and come to life. The game is awesome, and it's surprisingly funny. I don't think any game I played this month had me laughing harder than this one, without even trying. The silliness and absurdity is shot up to 10, with characters just reacting to the world totally different from how you think they should. The music slaps, which, you know, didn't surprise me. I mean, this game's music is awesome. And the combat has been really fun, though a bit easy. There are a lot of cutscenes which can really disrupt the gameplay, but watching the characters interact and just do their own thing is fun regardless. Giving this game a score, easy 9 out of 10. I enjoyed every second of this game. I'm definitely coming back, and I'm definitely finishing it. Virgil, I'm coming for you, buddy. This game interested me from its concept alone. The game has you living the life of this random person, but every time you blink in real life, the game skips forward in time, which can be as much as a few seconds to a few years. Now that I've beaten the game, this game is kind of hard to talk about. I still can't tell if I loved it or not yet. The story definitely had some weak spots, but when it does its best, the story sinks you into a world like no other. You feel like this person reliving their life and their childhood, and it's so interesting. It's heartbreaking to see their struggles, and you feel happy for them when you see their successes. I don't want to spoil too much of the game, but it goes to some dark places and really hits extremely hard. The characters also really fleshed out from your mom to your dad, which feel like they both are given the right amount of attention to make them stand out on their own. I'm happy I got to play it, and it left me empty for the first day after I played it, which I don't know if it's a good or bad feeling yet. If I had to criticize the game, the blinking feature, at least in my room, was so hard to use. It just could not figure it out right, and I kept blinking on accident. Plugging this in, I would give this an easy 8 out of 10. I'm still kind of processing the game since it does so much really well, but it's far from a masterpiece for me. To all Outer Wild fans, I did this game dirty. At 11 o'clock, this game can be really confusing. The game tells you very little, but expects you to know quite a bit. So in the first hour that I played it, since I was really tired, I just tried to figure stuff out and try to explore. I kept crashing my plane, I kept talking with the random strangers and trying to solve puzzles. The gameplay is fun and the visuals obviously stand out quite a bit. The spaceship is really fun to pilot, but I still haven't quite figured it out. Landing is so hard for me, I don't really know how to do it. But I do like a challenge, so I'm gonna definitely hop back into it. There's a lot to do in this game, and I really want to sit through to see what all the reviews are about, since I clearly did not get to all the good parts. Playing this game in, I would give this a 7 out of 10. Another one of those games where I would feel really uncomfortable giving it anything less, since I haven't experienced the game to its fullest. I am coming back to this game. Fear not. I was kind of worried adding a more visual novel style game to the list, but to my surprise, it's pretty great. The story is captivating and the characters are extremely fun. Despite having so many characters, the story is balancing them really well and giving the right amount of time to each of them. The environments and overall visuals are great, and the gameplay is what you'd expect out of a light novel, yet it still tries to do more. The music is all jams and it's really fun to listen to while working through the cases. Though I never got to a class trial so I can't speak about that, the rest of the game has been pretty great. Giving it a score, I'd give it an easy 8 out of 10, and I'm excited to play more. Alright, I'm gonna keep it 100, I just wanted an excuse to play more Doom. When that music kicks in, ooh, you know you're in for a good time. The gameplay is so reactive and addictive, and I love it. It feels so great having to balance so many things at once, yet it's still being manageable. I haven't gotten deep into the story or any characters, but honestly, I don't even feel like I need them since the gameplay is just so immensely fun. This game is an easy 9 out of 10, and I can't wait to go back to killing more monsters. So I actually started watching The Last of Us show on HBO, but I figured, hey, why don't I just play the game myself? And this game's atmosphere is immaculate. It builds it so well and the tension keeps you nervous at all times. The voice acting and characters are so well realized and it's fascinating to see how these characters deal with the situation they're in. This world feels realistic and well realized as you walk through this post-apocalyptic world now that the zombies have started attacking. The colors and visuals, while not my style, still suit the mood so well and help all the visuals stand out. This game does so much to combine the story and the gameplay. 
from how it teaches you how to shoot to how you can move your head around and interact with the first cutscene of the game. It is so fascinating how much of this game they actually tie into being playable. The gameplay feels smooth and there's a lot of options during combat, which is always nice since there is so much to keep track of at times. I also love the pacing of this game, with every event making you feel like you're moving the story forward. With how it combines story and gameplay, I'd give it an easy 9 out of 10. And I'm so excited to see where Joel and Ellie's story goes next. This is a game I actually started several years ago, so I was wondering what it would be like coming back to it. I love the look of the world. The graphics and visuals are not as good as other games I've played, but the world feels so genuine and can be quite beautiful at times. Its world is immersive with every place feeling well realized, especially with so many interactable NPCs to talk to. And that's not to mention just how pleasant the music can be. I also really like its UI. It fits the theme really well and helps convey all the important information. I also like that there's two different routes you can take from the tutorial, which means I was able to have an entirely different experience despite already playing the game, which made hopping back in feel extremely fun and unique. This game can be a bit janky at times, but it just adds to its uniqueness, and it's pretty funny. This game earns an easy 8 out of 10 for me, and I can't wait to explore more of this world. Fallout New Vegas is one of those games that I've tried multiple times to get into, yet it never really clicked with me. But now is the time to give it the chance it deserves. The music, while not my style, suits the general mood and atmosphere the game is going for. The characters are very interesting and work well with the world that they are put in. The addition to robots and monsters adds so much to the richness to the world and keeps the world feeling fresh. The game can crash quite a bit, which is a bit frustrating, but overall the game is a solid 8 out of a 10. I did enjoy my time with the game and do plan on getting back to it eventually. I chose something different. I chose the impossible. I chose Rapture. This game is a visual spectacle. The aesthetic to this game is near unmatched. The world is built beautifully and the music is so good. The violin makes every area feel haunting. The animations and sound design are top notch for everything in the game, from the power ups to the guns. The boss fights definitely feel a bit janky, but outside of those encounters, the combat is really fun, and I love running around in such a cool looking place with such awesome music. There's not much to say about Bioshock except it's just awesome. This game earns an easy 9 out of 10, and I can't wait to dive back into it. A 2D Souls-like game always seemed kind of interesting to me, so I was curious to see how this game would try to pull it off. And this game is very solid so far. The art style is very unique, and I love its hand-drawn look. The combat is really fun and creative, considering its 2D limitations to work with. I love the level design, and it's fun to travel around the world. The NPCs give good advice on where to go, and there's multiple paths and shortcuts which can make the game feel really interconnected. However, like most Souls-like games, it can be really easy to get lost, which can be kind of annoying. I hate to whine about it since it's what I signed up for, but this game can also be really hard. The limited healing is rough, and never knowing when the next checkpoint is going to be, or what enemies are even going to show up, can make it so that when you travel really far just to get clobbered by an enemy you've never seen before, really frustrating. Still, it's always satisfying to find a checkpoint and beat an area that's been beating you against all odds. Surprisingly, I wasn't big on the music, which was really odd. I mean, the tracks all sound fine on their own, but it doesn't really mesh well with the actual tones the game is going for, from what I've experienced so far. However, one of the best parts about this game is easily the co-op mode. It is so fun to fight all the enemies with friends and explore the world together and figure things out. Plugging this game in, I'd give it an easy 7 out of 10. I'm not going to rush back into it, but I do want to go back and finish it. This was actually a request from my brother since it's his favorite game of all time, so I had to give it a try. And straight off the rip, this has got to be some of the worst controls of all time. Everything is fine when you remap it, but the mapping on default is beyond awful. And even knowing the controls is still janky. However, for a game made in 2003, the graphics aren't awful, and the overall visual style is really solid with what they had to work with. The world feels alive around you, with different NPCs you can talk to and spaceships flying in and out of the city in the background. The characters and story have me really interested in what's going on in the world and what's going to happen next, so I'm excited to play more. Plug this game in, I'd give it about a 7 out of 10. There's so much that holds this game back, but there's also so much about this game that is super fun. Halo is a classic I missed out on in my childhood, so I was really excited to give it a fair shot now. So far the story is pretty standard and didn't really grab my attention, but the combat is so cool with so many new guns to try, and so many cool enemies to fight as well. The visuals are high quality with some amazing environments, and the music is simply immaculate. During fights or just big moments, the music kicks it up into high gear and makes every moment feel important. Playing this game in, I give it an 8 out of 10. I do want to come back to it, but I really don't know when. 
This game had a lot to live up to, and to my surprise, it was amazing. The pixel art is really high quality, and the characters are so fun, but what really shines through is its story. The time travel shenanigans have me so curious as to what other misadventures my team will go on. The combat is also surprisingly fun for being turn-based, using a time-based system similar to Final Fantasy VII, but also allowing for some cool combo moves with your positioning. To me, this game is an easy 8 out of 10, and I'm excited to see where they take the concept next. I was actually really nervous to try this game at first since its style didn't really appeal to me, but I had to go and see what it was like for myself. And to my surprise, I ended up loving the game. The movement felt crisp and the puzzles were so fun. Each level feels like a small window into a new world, and the pacing to get each star feels just right, like you're constantly making progress. The fights are so creative, and it's actually been a blast so far. The story is about what you'd expect from a Mario game, but the same can be said about the music, with each track being a bop. While the camera can be a bit janky, it is such a minor issue compared to just how much this game does well. Giving this game a score, I'd give it a high 9 out of 10. I can't wait to explore other worlds and see what else this classic has to offer. I hate to end this video on a bad note, but this is just straight up one of the worst games I've ever played. This game has a simple and seemingly interesting premise, but it goes about it in the most monotonous and boring way possible. The gameplay loop is extremely uninteresting, making you just click a button that sends you right back to your desktop, and it's just rinse and repeat for 30 minutes! The whole game is 30 minutes! And if you're unlucky enough to not listen to his dialogue at the end of the game, you have to play it all over again! There were a few interesting ideas, and I chuckled at a few jokes, but they are rarely fleshed out or go beyond their introduction, so its potential is just so wasted. I hate to rip it apart so much, since from what I understand it was mostly made by one guy, but this game could not be further from my type of game. Plugging this game in, I'd give it a 2 out of 10. It is disastrous, and I do not understand its high reviews. And those were the 30 games I tried over the course of this month. Just to make things easy, this is how I would rank all the games I tried this month from best to worst. I actually really enjoyed committing myself to a challenge and seeing how I stuck with it. It was incredibly fun to try out so many new experiences and find so many new games to try. And if you're interested in seeing me finish some of these games, please comment down below if you'd like a follow-up video once I have beaten them. But otherwise, my friends, thank you so much for watching, as well as helping me hit 200 subscribers. It means the world to me, and I will do my best to keep making fun videos.